Andrew Wax, my man. Uh, it's so pumped to get a chance to actually record with you and talk to you here. Um, thank you for taking some time. Armin, thanks for having me, man. Uh, so glad to be here. Oh yeah, of course. Let's, let's, I mean, let, let's even just jump right into it because I think a lot of people are going to be like, what is going on here? What is this conversation? Uh, Andrew is a biochemist who knows a whole lot about how the human physiology has like, basically the average human physiology has just deteriorated in the past, like 50 years, pretty much. And, uh, he's the director of clinical care at live health and they do, I mean, what's the best way of describing what you guys do, Andrew? I, I don't want to. I don't want to sell it short or oversell. Yeah. We're lo longevity medicine and human optimization. We're a we're a tele we're a nationwide telemedicine human optimization clinic. Badass. That that's a, that is a great elevator pitch. That's way faster and more concise than <laughs> I would have described it. Um, and I guess you know, I, I'm curious right off the bat, like how jacked up is the average person's hormone profile how jacked up like physiologically is the average person so it's a I, I mean that's that's a really interesting question and there's it's a really it's loaded right uh so it really what it comes down to is the average person is not a healthy person so you know and one way we can go about talking about this is we run a lot of labs on people when they come in and, and it's a pretty extensive lab panel much different from what you would get from a primary care doctor and in that panel are a lot of hormones. Um, so in, in your average guy, we're gonna look at your testosterone levels. We're gonna look at estradiol levels. We look at uh, thyroid hormone. We look at how hard your body's working to produce those hormones. Um, but what you end up finding is, is that the average person is pretty jacked up. Uh, you know, and I joke with people because those, those averages that you see in those reference ranges that you see on these lab values that you get are you know that they're formulated by the average non-obese person in a given age range that's and, and if you you know okay so walk around walmart and that's the average person right so then these lab values are comparing you to that person who, who wants to be compared to the average american no one so <laughs> it, what, what we're finding and, and i'll use testosterone as an example there what we're finding is that testosterone levels are on the steady decline uh, likely because of all of the estrogens and the plasticizers in the environment um, I'm sure the amount of birth control in the environment has, has a lot to do with that as well. Birth control pills are one of the worst things you can do to yourself as a woman for several reasons. Um, but uh, ultimately what we see is testosterone is just on a steady decline. So if you consider that now these reference ranges for testosterone are something like 290 to 900 for total testosterone, uh, well, that, that's a pretty big range. But if you look 20 years ago, those ranges were... 500 to 1300, 1400. But as testosterone's declined, rather than actually look at, hey, what's going on in the environment? Why, why are these things declining? The, uh, the These lab companies and, and uh, overseeing bodies say, well, the average is changing, so we'll just change our reference range. Yeah, they're, they're well, saying the normal is, is dipping. So right. like, we're just going to adjust the range and it, it won't be a big problem anymore. Right, exactly. So yeah, it's like, okay, we, we fixed the problem. So, it's, so that's, that's not really true. So, you know, we, we see a lot of guys who come in and they're just like, I can't do what I need to do. I, I can't, I can't sustain. I, you know, my, my work performance is suffering. I can't get a good night's sleep. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm moody. Um, I, my athletic performance isn't where it once was. My, my brain is just, I'm not dialed in. And what's up with this belly fat? Uh, so it's, it's, it's an ongoing issue that we're often seeing there that, uh, and you know, I'm using guys as an example, but it's, it's just as prevalent in women. So, um, I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's my long winded response to how jacked up is the average person's hormones. Pretty, pretty jacked up. Pretty jacked uh, up. Yeah. Pretty, pretty jacked up. But truthfully, it just, I mean, it, and you know, I, I think we'll talk about it more later, but, uh, you know, we ran your hormones and you're not the average person. You're, you're actually within these optimal ranges of, of what's perfect. So you're, you're genetically blessed and you're also living your life the way you should be in terms of, uh, you know, uh, your exercise and diet and, uh, routine overall. Um, however, I, I've never seen anyone with labs like yours. So I, that is that is the entire reason why I agreed to this interview was so that you could just <laughs> beat my horn. On, on. Uh, yeah, but I appreciate you saying that, Andrew. I appreciate. It. Uh, yeah, I I have gotten my uh, my labs done. I, I have been working with Live Health over the past like uh, month and a half, almost two months at this point. And uh, 
Uh, I am also very surprised and pleasantly so that my level, my like all my all my numbers came back uh, exceptionally good. So I feel like healthy as a horse. I feel really good. Um, I apparently have been taking very good care of myself, and you know, luckily enough, I I can continue just continuing to pursue myself as like a you know fitness slash father slash husband slash human being. Yeah, and so I, I think you also need to put a big thank you out there to your parents. You know, thanks mom and dad for passing on the best genes in the world. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, yeah, Apparently. That, I mean, that, that's absolutely true. And, you know, the other thing I didn't mention is there, there's also a lot of data about uh, use of NSAIDs in pregnancy, um, which, what you know, if, if parents were using NSAIDs in pregnancy, that can significantly hinder uh, ability to produce testosterone down the line. Um, so again, thanks mom and dad, your, your, you know, your, your mom's gestational period was, uh, she did a good job. Yeah. I, apparently I just had a really ideal and I mean, I did have an ideal childhood, but I like the ideal, you know, genetic childhood as well. Just, just getting the luck of the draw really well. Uh, yeah. so yeah, I, 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 I have had firsthand experience with what you guys do. Um, and I, I'm, I'm curious to, to go back to this idea of, you know, like, you mentioned, you know, poor sleep, moody, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're holding on to some belly fat. You're not performing well, whether it's work or personal life or exercise or whatever. Uh, you know, so that's how, that's how poor hormonal health manifests, but like, how do, how do you get there? And like, that's the average, right? How do you get there as a person to get to poor hormonal health? And then like, how do you turn that around? Because Again, professionally, this is literally what you do. You get people yeah. to fix this in their lives through like practice, through uh, supplementation, through, you know, better hygiene and sleep and exercise and, and diet and nutrition. So, you know, what, what does that actually look like in terms of like, what's the downtrend of people actually getting themselves into that hole? And then how are they getting themselves out? I mean, so just consider your average person overworked, uh, not enough sleep. Um, not enough self-care and your, your typical American lifestyle with uh, McDonald's a few times a week and, um, uh, you know, just, just, just no, no routine in terms of diet, no routine in terms of exercise or, you know, I get into the gym when I can, uh, but I crush a package of Oreos or a pint of ice cream every night um, because I'm a stress eater. And that's, that's, that's sort of the recipe for a disaster. But even if all of those things are perfect, like I said, th there are things in the environment that are, I mean, I see guys in their twenties who have testosterone. That's a third of yours, right? It's so it's, it's very prevalent that you see these, these things are just going downhill. So oftentimes it's not all lifestyle. Oftentimes you can correct all, all these parts of someone's lifestyle and there's still so the best they can do on their testosterone. Again, total testosterone is maybe 450. And in that case, it's like, okay, some other interventions. And there are things you can use to pharmaceuticals that actually boost your own production of testosterone, or in some cases that, you know, use, use testosterone. Um, and again, we're, we're using testosterone as the example specifically here, but the, the same holds true for women and, and men and estrogens, as well as progesterone and uh, um, thyroid hormones. And, you know, there's also growth hormone that plays a significant role there. Um, but overall here, when you consider this downtrend of somebody who, okay, let's, let's get everything turned around and see what we can do naturally. Uh, it, it's about sleep hygiene. It, it's about uh, making sure you're getting an hour and a half of deep sleep and REM sleep every night. It's about uh, in, ensuring that uh, you, you have to get consistency in your sleep schedule. It's about working out at the appropriate time of day and doing the right type of workout at a certain time of day. Um, you know, and, and I, I see a lot of CrossFitters and a lot of these CrossFitters get so into uh, uh, working out and they're, they're so excited about you, you get addicted to it, right? And I'm, I'm victim of this, you're victim of this. But what we find is that the people who are doing CrossFit for the sake of CrossFit, they, they often do more damage to their body than, than good because they're, they're so into it. So then your, your adrenals get sapped out. Um, whether or not you want to call adrenal fatigue a, a, a true diagnosis is, is one thing, but it's, it's hypothalamic pituitary axis dysfunction. So you're overstressing your body and you're just not going the right direction. So then, okay, what do you do about it? What do we do? Well, we, we fix that. We say, okay, lay off CrossFit for a little, bit, little while, or what you do specifically, you use CrossFit as a way to train for functional 
fitness, a functional lifestyle. So you train for, for jujitsu, you train so that you can go to a hike, you train so that you can be a, a great new father. Um, so I think that's, that's more the direction that people need to be going, especially these people who are seemingly in great shape, because that's the other thing. So we have these people that are on the metabolic downtrend and they're doing all the things wrong, but the people who are seemingly doing everything right uh, not quite, you know, yeah, maybe, like maybe, under the hood, it might not exactly, exactly be there. Exactly. You look good at face value, but Hey, let's run some bloods. Let's see what's going on. Um, so in turning it around, it's, it's, it really just depends on what the person needs, but it can have to do with mindset. It can have to do with, uh, sleep and energy, nutrition, uh, frank hormone supplementation or, or prescriptions. It can have to do with, uh, gut health and immunity. And, and exercise. So th those are those are sort of the main pillars that we work off of at Lip Health. You know, I, I uh, one of the things I always told our members at the gym when they joined was like, you're going to be so excited about this for six months, a year, 18 months. Uh, your goal is to try and do this in a way that you can do this 50 years from now, not right. not two years from now. And if you can if you can balance out your output in your workouts where you can find, you know, places to peak and really kind of go after it and get, get crazy. But most of the time you're doing this like really sustainable thing. It's going to help in the long term because the last thing you want is to burn the candle out so hard that you like, you look great or you feel, or you might look great, but you feel like garbage. And the, Good. the result of that is, you know, your, your joints hurt, your gut health's all over the place. Your hormones are all over the place. You're like, your thyroid's all over the place. And it's like, yeah, you're, you're looking okay. You're like summer's pretty, pretty fun for you, but you probably are hurting your longevity over, over the course of your lifetime by, by doing this yourself. Right. So, and I think and we, I say something similar to people coming in is my goal is to keep you doing the things that you love for as long as humanly possible for as long as you're alive. I want you to be able to do a kipping pull up. Why not? Um, but I think, so when you, when you really consider the role of longevity in sport and, and you talk start talking about health span versus lifespan, where health span is this concept of OKR, you know, what is your quality of life here? And lifespan is how long are you living? But what you find is they're one and the same, really. So I mean, whatever your quality of life is, if if your joints are trashed, you're you're not gonna live a long time, right? Because you're not able to maintain muscle mass so that you can stand up out of a chair. You're you know, you're gonna be wheelchair bound. Uh, because you've completely destroyed your spine and your hips. And, you know, look at, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, look, look at like Ronnie Coleman, uh, Mr. Olympia, best, best bodybuilder in the world, arguably, some people disagree, but, you know, he's, he did so much damage to his body so that he could maintain his, his high performance in a, in a short period of time that, you know, right now he's not doing great, but um, he was doing really well for a while. Yeah. Like when I met, actually, it's funny you should bring up Ronnie Coleman because I met him at the Arnold uh, like five years ago or four years ago, and he was in a wheelchair. He had just gotten through like some really messed up back surgeries. Uh, luckily, he's out of a wheelchair now. He's like he's he looks, seems to be doing a lot better, but there definitely is like you know he rode he rode his body really really hard and paid the price for it. And it's it's an extreme, right? That that's absolutely an extreme. But really, what what we hone in on is keep you doing the things that you love for as long as you can do them as long as yeah. you want to do it great let's do it yeah and then one of the things that that surprised me so i i still don't know much about what uh what like hormonal replacement or like i don't know because you know like we said at the beginning my my panels came back really good so i i, I didn't need any right. so I, I don't know what much that looked like but what i was really interested in and what really kind of blew my mind was looking at like how in depth all these different markers were. And then the differences between some of the things that you'd say, oh, well, look, here's what the range is, but we actually don't care about that range. We want it to be, you know, at the very high end or even more than that is what we consider optimal. And I'm curious if you can go into some of that, because to me, that was kind of mind blowing to think about. Like, I always think about like blood test is blood test is blood test. Like, you know, you get your panel, you see what it is and you're good to go. But, uh, you know, realistically, there's there's a lot of like little things under the hood that you can make adjustments to that makes a really big difference down the line. So what, so your labs weren't all perfect, right? They, weren't <laughs> all perfect. Perfect. they were not all perfect. They were, they were perhaps some of the best labs I've ever seen. But uh, no, they were they, they were probably the best labs I've ever seen. 
Um, but your, for example, your blood glucose was not where it should be. Your spot glucose was, and, and your A1C was, wasn't spectacular, um, but your spot glucose was, I believe, in, in the high 90s. And ideally, we want to see that number closer to 85, right? But what's the reference range? The reference range that the uh, lab provides is, well, I think it's somewhere like 80 to 100. But if you're above 90, we know that that's, that's taken years off your life. Uh, so we want you to be 85 to 90, or maybe even a little bit lower. Um, th there are other metrics that you look at in what's called a, a, compre a complete blood count, where we look at all of the ratios of cells that you're spitting out and how frequently they're being spit out from your bone marrow, where you produce all of your cells. Um, so what we look at there, one thing that we look at is an MCV, mean cell volume. So a mean cell volume is really interesting because the higher that number is, is the larger your cells are, the larger volume that they have. Now, if these cells are, are very large, then that means they're a new cell. Brand new cells are very large. But if, if the average size of that cell is large on the blood count that we run there, that suggests that those cells are dying quickly because the average cell is large. So you actually wanna see that over time, those cells get smaller and smaller and smaller and they're living a long time. So that's, that's another really interesting component where we see, okay, what's the length of time that your cells are surviving? What's your cell survival? So that's another thing we look at where we wanna see that number absolutely perfect, not in this wide range, similar to testosterone, you know, and we'll, we'll jump back to hormones here. Um, you know, you, you talk about testosterone, and again, I, I use the example of total testosterone because it's just easier to understand. When we're looking at labs, we look at a total testosterone, a sex hormone binding globulin, a free testosterone, bioavailable testosterone. We also look at uh, active estrogens to balance that out and see what your uh, testosterone estradiol ratio are. In women, we look at progesterone estradiol ratios, and we, we get really, really crazy, really in depth with it. But again, circling back, total testosterone is 200 to 900. But you could argue that optimal testosterone in a male is somewhere between 800 and 1100. So, okay, my, my numbers came back and I'm at 350. That's that's normal. Yeah, it's so if you normal. Your, yeah. If you go to your primary care doctor and you get that lab back, he's gonna say, yeah, everything looks fine. You're good. Yeah, it's good. Uh, but what, <laughs> what's different about us and when and what you saw was, hey, let's let's actually get in there. Let's let's see what how can we get you here rather than keeping you you know within this range. Nobody wants the testosterone of a 75 year old, not even a 75 year old wants testosterone. <laughs> right? like, who wants that? Uh, so that's, uh, yeah. I think sometimes when people think of, uh, when, when people think of, of, you know, like the, you know, like a, a 50 year, like they think of Joe Rogan, you know what I mean? They think of Rogan, <laughs> Rogan, who's like, who has this giant skull and like his jaw has grown like four sizes in, in like, you know, in dimension, right. you know, his, his like, you, you, they think of like the, like Dana, they think of like Dana white. I've, I love like those two examples are like my two favorite <laughs> examples. Cause like, if you look at them 15 years ago and you look at them right now, you're like, what has even happened to you in the past 15 years? Like this is crazy, right? They're both like, they're merging forms too. They're becoming these like kind of like, like hulking right. bald white dudes <laughs> with giant skulls and and jaws and you know like i think that's what people think about when they when they think about like oh there's you know i'm i'm trying to I, oh, that's when they think oh when they think about like, trt or that's what they think about when they think about like health doctors growth hormone, or, or growth health hormone. hormone. yeah exactly. it's no and it's more like no I, I don't want you to be super physiologic nobody want you know super physiology is cool if that's what you're going for i guess um, and if, if people come to me, it's like, yeah, we, we could, we could do that. But the, <laughs> other, side of it is, the other side of it is our, our, the average person that we work with comes in and they say, I just want to be like a better human. You know, I want to, I want to feel like Armin. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, so that it's like, okay, well, let's do that. Let, let's, let, let's get you to feel like Armin. Um, so I, I think, and that's such a, a unique example because I, I think uh, probably, the, the jaw changes and the skull changes and just like the huge, you know, the huge person like it's probably more growth hormone related um, than, than anything. Certainly uh, if somebody's running high testosterone numbers, uh, super physiologically, you're just gonna see, you know, everything grows, you, you just get bigger. Uh, but you also see growth hormone increase when you're, when you're on testosterone as well. So, um, or conversely, if you're on growth hormone, you see testosterone increase. Um, you know, all, all that said, it's uh, it's, it's 
really just depending on what your goals are. If you, yeah. you want to look like Joe Rogan or Dana White, then yeah, cool. Let's, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> uh, I, I also, do you know, do you ever watch, uh, do you know who, who Derek with more plates, more dates is on YouTube? I've, I've seen a few of his videos. Yeah. Dude, I love that guy. He is yeah. awesome. So like, it, it sounds he's like smart. he is smart. Yeah. He, so that's what I was going to say. Smart dude. It sounds like you guys have like similar backgrounds. Like, you know, you have like the biochemistry thing going, you got like the, like he clearly under, he clearly understands the, uh, the like sort of PED specific side of, you know, doing any sort of like blood, blood test, blood doping, that sort of thing. I mean, blood doping is such like a charged way of saying it. He's it really smart about how to, you know, how to actually use exogenous supplements to improve performance, physiology, yeah, look, that sort of thing. And I love seeing him talk about it. <laughs> What's that? We, we, we do a little bit of that. Not, not quite to that extreme. Sure. Yeah. I mean, because, okay, my, my, my read on what you guys do is much more on the, I want to feel really good as opposed to the, I'm trying to uh, be a bodybuilder or beat some sort of like, you know, governing bodies drug test. <laughs> right. I mean, and you know, it doesn't matter, you know, the governing body drug test, it's, it's an interesting thing. Cause I, I most of the time I like to say uh, it's a, it, it's, it's more of an IQ test than it is a drug test. Right. But uh, I think, you know, really when, when you consider that stuff, the, the things that people are getting popped for, it's just like, what are you even doing? Like, what, <laughs> what, are, what are you even thinking? You like, this is, oh, you just, you just had no idea what you were doing is, yeah. is, is what it comes down to. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's, that's a, a different conversation. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think, I think also, so like a lot of people who are watching this, like I, I, I'm not sure if we were recording when I told you, like the average person that watches my content is very similar demographically to me. You know, they're, they're most likely male. They're most likely somewhere in their early to mid thirties. You know, they're most likely in, you know, this whole like long-term thing where they've been doing fitness for a long time, but they're looking for it as like a, as a piece of their life, as opposed to the entirety of their life. Oh. And, you know, I think, I think that population is, probably in a place where they really enjoy the little tinkering that comes with how do I see an output in my performance or life by just having a little more sleep or if I fix this part of my diet or if I do slightly different training or if I suddenly start adding in you know like cold plunges or whatever um, you know breath work whatever it ends up being that little tweaking ends up being a lot of fun for this population and you know, the fact that I got that sort of look under the hood of like what my blood panel looked like to like a, an almost extreme degree. Like I keep it on my phone and anytime anyone's talking about like blood panels, I pull it up and I'm like, check it out. Yeah. Like, look at this. Uh, so I have it like saved on my phone and like my sister-in-law is a pharmacist and like, we have a bunch of like doctors and stuff in the family and like everyone's like into this sort of thing. So I'm always like, yeah, check it out. This is my levels and here's where I'm like really good. And here's where I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I, I just really enjoyed that aspect of being able to sort of like look under the hood. And I think people might be watching or listening to this and they're like, well, is this a commercial for this like live health thing? It's like, yeah, maybe like you could say it's a commercial for this thing, but more than that, actually, the strange thing is that instead of giving people like, Hey, go to my website and get this link and you can do your own. Right. Actually, what what we're trying to do here is expose people to what you do because you're hiring. Yep, that's that's it. So that that's why we're here today. Uh, you know, and, and it's funny because I so I I lived in Santa Monica for a summer with my sister, and it was my first exposure to CrossFit at CrossFit Los Angeles, where where we met. And I I've been working with Live Health now for two years, and I thought, you know what? We, we really need some exposure in this realm. And I'm really looking for somebody in this role who can help me. And then my sister, who you're, you're, you're still reasonably close with, was like, why don't you reach out to Armin? I was like, my guy, yes. <laughs> so it's, it, so I, I, but I, I think, um, you know, we're, we are hiring, uh, we're, we're, we're growing fast and we're always looking for somebody to fill the role that I currently am in. Um, a little bit more about what I do and what our health concierges do is, is, is what, what that actually entails is we're like an encyclopedia. 
So if, if you're somebody who's, you know, I'm so passionate about human optimization and health, and I love working with people, and I've got a background in science, or, you know, you're, you're really into peptides or hormones or fitness, nutrition, whatever it is, and you have experience working with other people, uh, and, and you, you're passionate about this and you live this, then this is a, a, a great opportunity. So again, we're, we're absolutely hiring for this position. And uh, really it's, it's a unique opportunity to be a liaison between patient and physician. So a little bit about our, our process and what we work through so that it can be a little bit more understandable is uh, patients come on and they start working with us and we uh, have them fill out a membership intake form. After they fill out that membership intake form, they get scheduled for a initial consultation or meet your health concierge appointment. And it's a video chat looks just like this. This is where I do all my consults, um, as do all of our other health concierges. Um, and uh, we, we establish rapport. It's usually a 30 to 30 minute to an hour long appointment where we just chat. We chat about your whole medical history, what your goals are. I like to say that we practice what's called goal-based medicine. So you come in, you give us a goal and, and hey, let's help you achieve that. What can we change? What can we alter? So then after that, we pass you on and, 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 and we get labs for the patients and, and the health concierge in that role uh, gets those labs ordered, gets everything figured out and helps the, helps the uh, new member patient decide, okay, what, what labs do you wanna order? What can I tell you about labs? Do you wanna know what a, 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 a nuclear magnetic resonance uh, lipo profile is or do you just want a standard lipid panel? Right, for you, we got the NMR panel, which is that super in-depth lipid panel, which that was is- was wild, that thing was we, cool. We, we, is really cool because it shows you what's your insulin resistance, what's the size of your uh, uh, LDL particles, what's the size of your HDL, HDL particles. Because as you know, you could have normal cholesterol and normal LDLs, but if, if it's just a bunch of tiny little particles, that's arguably worse than having high LDLs and big particles. And the example that I like to use that, that a doctor told me, uh, one of our doctors that, we, that works with our platform, she, she's absolutely brilliant, but the analogy that she likes to use is, Big fluffy particles are like throwing a beach ball at a wall. It's not going to do any damage, but you start taking marbles or even a gun and you start shooting that at the wall, and you know you're going to have uh, paint chips all over the place. Anyway, I digress. Um, the blood panel, by the way, just to just to, so the blood panel was so in depth that uh, I got six vials drawn, and the lady that was drawing it had to reference her computer multiple times to make sure she was like. What is this that you're doing? like? How does the why are they pulling this? What is it? She was like looking through drawers to find the correct like, color coded vials and stuff. It was like legit, like they were confused because people don't come in and get that type of like in depth yeah. blood testing. It was so awesome. Yeah. So that's, uh, I, I get that response a lot actually. It's like, I, you know, I, I thought I needed some orange juice afterwards. Yeah. Um, people like it. Was I, so I, much blood. So much blood. So much blood. Um, so a, 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 <laughs> that's great. Um, after, after you get those bloods done, then they, they come back and we schedule you with the doctor. Um, all of our doctors on our platform are, are board certified and been working in human optimization for between seven and 20 years. And, uh, you, the, the patient works with them specifically to formulate a plan and review the lab results and, and super nitpicky fashion. And it's the health concierge's role to know everything that that doctor is saying so that in a follow-up appointment the next day, when patients have tons of questions, we can answer all those questions and put the care plan into action. And then what we do is, is we follow up with patients over time, again, to operate as that uh, liaison or biochemistry tutor or um, you know, a, a quarterback to, to member care and, and teaching our members essentially how to advocate for themselves, right? Because a lot of people come into this and they go, how do I even talk to a doctor? You know what, it, it, in the past, it's always been the doctor says, this is what you're gonna do, but this is, that's not how we operate, right? This is elective medicine. This is a, uh, you're a teammate in this process. And so it's really important for the health concierge to foster that and ensure that, you know, that the member has a good experience from a standpoint of, do you understand what's going on? How can I be of support to you? What do you need today, right? So um, yeah. I, I, I love it. I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was really cool experience going through it. The end result, by the way, for me, in case people are, are interested to hear what I ended up getting in terms of a service and a product is like, I got this like customized bespoke role of supplements that's organized evening, morning, evening or morning, evening, morning, evening in its own little packets with, you know, vitamins and supplements that, that 
I needed specifically. So it's like a big dose of vitamin D, you know, magnesium at, in the evenings and like, you know, various things that they're really important for me to bring back into that, like high normal optimal range. And it makes, um, it makes like the supplement vitamin daily, like what am I taking makes it way easier to literally just get this box delivered to my house that has my name on it. And every little packet is, li- is labeled and it's in order. So it's like, take one in the morning. And then by the time, like the, when you pull it out, you like, it rolls out of the box and you just pull off the perforation. And there's the, there's the evening one, the next time and the next one's in the morning. And so it's, it's just made things really convenient and easy. And in my experience, you know, I'm not the, I'm not very much like a supplements guy in general. I very, very easily fall off the boat when it comes to taking supplements, but it was so easy uh, and, and well packaged that I actually took them with me to the hospital when Katie was giving birth oh. and I didn't miss a single day. Like I was just like, all right, well, it's, oh. it's seven o'clock in the morning. I just like took my morning meds. Like it was, it was like, I didn't miss taking my supplements even while my baby was being born. I'm actually really impressed. <laughs> I'm, I'm really impressed. Uh, <laughs> no. And I, I think that what, what, that's also a testament to your labs were awesome. They were. But we still, yeah. found, we, we still found some stuff like we, we yeah. it, was, it was very clear that, hey, we can still do some things for you. Um, so I think uh, and the, the other big thing that we're trying to target with you is, is insulin resistance just a little bit and, and just bringing down general inflammatory response just a little bit. So and, and we'll see in follow up labs how, how we do there. Um, but uh, I'm excited. Fingers crossed. That goes. Uh, Andrew, if people, if someone is interested in potentially learning more about this job, h- how can they, how can they do that? So go ahead and send me an email at Andrew at livehealth.com. That's A N D R E W at live L I V H E A L T H.com livehealth.com. No E after the V. Uh, we, uh, love to talk with you. We'll uh, schedule an interview and, and see if this is a good fit. Awesome. I love it. And I guess if somebody is also interested in starting it, you can also email Andrew. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> I don't like I, I, I should have some sort of a thing set up, but like I haven't even gotten that far. I was just like, let's yeah, do this. Yeah, it's it's hiring, let's do this. I, I will say so there there there's another live health out there. It's livehealth.org is a psychiatric telemedicine service. Uh livehealth.com is us. <laughs> Okay. Or livehealth.com. So uh, if you reach out to livehealth.org and you say, hey, I want to get an extensive blood panel and human optimization, they'll say, well, you're you're definitely crazy. So let's um, let's <laughs> chat. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So yeah, that, that can be confusing. Okay, yeah. so livhealth.com and Andrew at livehealth.com. Uh, dude, Andrew, thank you so much. It's been awesome chatting. I, I can't wait to get like my follow-up and, and sort of even get a deeper look underneath what's going yeah, on here. We'll do that in, um, I think you're scheduled for repeat labs in four or five weeks. That sounds about right. Yeah. Super pumped. Awesome, dude. Well, thank yeah. you, Andrew. Well, great. Thanks so much for having me.